Hello, welcome to the section of the Trig and Precalculus Tutor. Uh, in this section, we're going to work on a class of identities called the addition and subtraction identities. Uh, what we're going to find as we write them on the board is that uh, there are, are a lot of them, but they're very similar to one another. Uh, and so, you know, after a while, if you read them on a page, like if you just open a book, to a page of identities and read the addition and subtraction identities. They all kind of run together because they all look very similar. Um, but just remember that there's only so many of them just because they're sine, cosine, and tangent, and then there's addition and subtraction. So there's lots of combinations to write down. But they're all fundamentally just showing you how um, sine and cosine, how the angles can be added and subtracted from one another, and how you'll get new identities pop out as a result of that. Here is where I think we start to get into the identities that are useful, but they're less common, less commonly used than some of the ones that we've used already before. I'm definitely not saying you will never use these identities. I'm just saying that you're probably not going to run into a need to use these as much as the Pythagorean identities or the fundamental identities or the trig rainbow and those things that we've talked about so far. So let's go ahead and write them down, and uh, you know I'd like to I'd like to actually write them down in front of you so you can kind of soak in what they look like, and then we'll work a few simple problems in this section, and in the next section we'll work some more complicated problems just to give you a little practice with how to use these guys. All right, so these are called the addition and subtraction identities. Addition, and you'll see exactly why this is this is named that in a second. It's pretty obvious. Subtraction identities. Okay, so there's several of them and I'm just going to kind of go through them here. Um, the first one is sine of A plus B where these are angles, don't forget anything, anytime you have something in here, so angle A and angle B is equal to the sine of angle A times the cosine of angle B plus the cosine of angle A times the sine of angle B. So what this is saying is that if I'm adding two angles together and then I'm taking the sine of the of, of the sum of these angles, then I can split that up if I need to or if I want to into the product of these co cosine and sine, sine of A cosine B plus cosine A times sine of B. So you see how it can kind of get confusing to write it all down because you've got sine A plus B and you've got all these things mixed together. So you need to be careful when you use them to make sure you're using the right one. Now very similar to that, sine of a minus b is very similar. Sine of a times cosine of b, that part's the same, minus cosine of a times the sine of b. Now I'll let that sink in. The only difference between these two identities, the only difference is the minus sign here. I'm not telling you this to memorize it. You're not going to be memorizing these, these uh, addition and subtraction identities. In fact, you're probably not going to memorize most of the identities that are follow, but you will be uh, expected to have a reference and know how to use them and, and, and just know that they exist also because sometimes it's nice to know that they exist. You can use them in your problems. So we have a minus sign in here. The only way it really translates into the final answer is there's a minus sign right there. So that is basically the addition and subtraction identities for the sine function. All right, so let's move on to the cosine function. Cosine of A plus B, angle A plus angle B, is equal to cosine of angle B, of angle A times cosine of angle B minus the sine of angle A times the sine of angle B. All right, so this looks similar but not quite the same. First of all, notice that unlike in this case where it was plus and plus, here 